I've been a data scientist now for over three years. And in this video, I want to answer some of the most common questions I get to offer some advice and guidance for those of you who are wanting to break into the field. Let's get into it. The first question is, is data science hard? Well, very open-ended question. Most people would consider data science quite hard because it has the topics of statistics, machine learning, coding, maths, all of these are seen as quite hard subjects nowadays. I don't think it's as hard as doing like a PhD in maths or something really technically research-based. However, it would seem, in my opinion, like to be a harder subject out of them all. However, it's all about your perspective. Sure, the subjects and what it contains and the things you need to know are deemed as hard, but in reality, it's all about like whether you enjoy it. I personally really love it. So the hardness aspect of it is not something I really think about. I don't think, oh, it's hard. I just think, oh, I just need to learn more. And that's kind of the attitude you need to have, particularly when you're pursuing something like data science. But in reality, it should apply to anything. The second question is the best laptop for data science. Now, in my opinion, a Mac is probably the best choice. And if you can, get a Mac with an M1 chip, M2 chip, any of the M series. The reason I say this is because Macs are kind of based on the Unix system, which is very similar to Linux. And Linux is kind of what most of the computers nowadays run on, like all the servers, things like that. Now, obviously you can get a Windows laptop. I personally don't really like them. I found Macs to perform better and I just like their design and how the user interface works. But to be honest, the laptop choice or the laptop you do have, sorry, shouldn't make a difference of whether you pursue data science or not. Just start with what you have and then you can go from there. The next question is, do I need to have a background as a data analyst before becoming a data scientist? No, for example, in my case, I became a data scientist right after university and many people I know also did the same. However, there is people who became a data analyst first and then went to data science. So it's really up to you. The latter, where you become a data analyst first, is normally a route where people who are struggling to get into data science go to data analysts first because data analysts tends to be slightly easy to get mainly because the requirement is a lot lower. But like I said, it doesn't really matter. Either route is fine. It just depends what you think is best for you at the time and what your current skill set is. The next question is, to what extent should I know SQL? SQL is a fundamental language for data science to know, so you should be quite proficient with it. In fact, I've got a whole separate video explaining the exact SQL knowledge you need to become a good data scientist. I'll link it on screen here in case you want to check it out. If you want a platform to learn SQL, then I recommend LearnSQL.com who are kindly sponsoring this video. LearnSQL.com is an online learning platform containing over 70 courses in a variety of SQL flavors like PostgreSQL, MySQL, MS SQL Server, and Standard SQL. Each course contains hands-on exercises solving real world problems and is entirely web-based. So you don't need to worry about any of that additional setup. It has great reviews on Trustpilot and is even used by top professionals at companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. If you are a complete beginner looking to break into data science, then I recommend the SQL from A to Z track. This will cover all the basic, intermediate, and advanced concepts you need to be a good data scientist. In celebration of Black Friday and Black Week, LearnSQL.com are offering 75% off on their All Forever package. This gives you access to all current and future courses released on the platform. This current deal will save you $450 and I'll leave it linked in the description below for you to check out. Did you ever get burned out for a certain period of time during your learning phase? I don't think I've ever experienced burnout properly. Sure, there's been times where I felt kind of exhausted or I can't be bothered to learn this. I never had that feeling of pure burnout. I mean, in my opinion, you can't really get burnt out on something that you really enjoy doing. Obviously, there's exceptions like don't work wherever it's 200 hours a week, if that's even possible. But because I enjoy data science so much and I enjoy learning it, I never felt like a chore or like this is boring X, Y, Z. So I feel like burnout is something that's really hard to get when you're doing something you really enjoy. What are some of the best specializations for data scientists? It depends on what you mean by specializations. In terms of degree-wise, any STEM subject is best. And if you can, try and do maths, physics, or computer science. 
because those are kind of the most relevant to a data science job or a job in machine learning. In terms of natural specializations within the roles, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter. There's no best, just choose one you like the most. For example, I specialize in forecasting and optimization problems, but there's people in my company who specialize in recommendation systems. Neither of us uh, have a better specialization. It's just what we enjoy doing and kind of what we fell into. So don't think too much about the best one. Just pick one that you think you enjoy the most because naturally that's what you'd be better at anyway. Is it possible to get into app development with data science? No, not really. I mean, app development or front-end developer, these are kind of separate tech professions. So if you're looking to become uh, or develop an app, then data science is probably not for you. There is some transferable skills, but don't become a data scientist if you want to develop apps because that's just not going to happen. Is the job market narrowing or looking to extend more in the future? I mean, yes, the market has been pretty poor recently, but to be honest, when it has not been bad. I remember when I graduated back in September 2021, it was bad then due to COVID and it's bad now. So the question is, when is it good? I feel like it's kind of always the best time and always the worst time at the same time, if that makes sense. So try not to worry too much about what Mark is doing. Just, you know, focus on your resume, focus on your applications, try and improve the way you apply for jobs. Because like I said, there's always people who say the market is really bad. There's also people saying the market is very good. So don't really focus on that. Just focus on being the best you can be in terms of your application to any position you apply for. Is it possible to work as a data scientist remotely? Yes, majority of companies offer hybrid roles and many of them offer remote positions. This is very popular within tech and it was popular before the pandemic and it's now even more popular after. Can you be a data scientist if you're not the greatest at maths? I mean, yes, you can, but it really comes down to what you mean the greatest. Like, obviously you don't need PhD, master's level mathematics, but you should be able to understand like what derivative is, how do you find a turning point, basic things, well, not really basic, but things you would learn in high school maths right at the end. So you should have some understanding and you don't worry about being some sort of Einstein about maths. Just understand the basics really well and that will be good enough to get you to the high levels. Do you have any suggestions on where I can look for data science internship opportunities? I mean, the classic websites are always good. LinkedIn, Glassdoor, Indeed, all those online platforms. What I've seen and heard that works really well for internships is just email a company and ask to work there in the summer for eight weeks. Don't expect to be paid. I mean, try, but don't worry about the money too much. You're kind of mainly after that experience. And most companies will take you on because first of all, it's only eight weeks. You're not getting paid by them. So what is really like holding them back from taking you on? And if you be more proactive about things, like I said, email companies who don't offer internships, but just ask them, then someone will probably say yes to you. And like I said, what's, what's in it for them? Not much, but they also don't lose anything. What are your opinions about AI engineers? I mean, to me, AI engineers are basically just ML engineers, but they focus more on things like LLMs and Gen AI. To be honest, I see them as ML engineers with certain specialism. Do I think they'll be the future of you know the tech jobs? Who knows? I think if you want to be an AI engineer, the nearest thing nowadays is an ML engineer who specializes in, in all the Gen AI and LLMs, like I just said. If you have any other data science questions, leave in a comment below and I'll make sure I'll answer it. And if you want more data science advice like this, then make sure you check out my weekly newsletter, Additional Data. I send it every Monday morning and it's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing data scientist. If that sounds interesting, I will leave a link in the description below for you to check out.